imagine living in a world with a bus-sized, three-horned-faced dinosaur that could probably beat the crap out of a T-Rex? Yes, I'm talking about the mighty Triceratops. Weighing 22,000 pounds with 800 teeth and the largest skull among land mammals, this beast was a force to be reckoned with. Which is why in this video, we're traveling back 66 million years to Western North America where it lived. Surprisingly, even though Triceratops translates to three-horned face in Greek, it actually only had two real horns, each reaching up to four feet long. So then why would it be named the three-horned face? Well, what people might mistake for a third horn on its snout was more like a piece of soft protein called keratin, similar to our fingernails or hair. While it wouldn't have been much help in a fight, it certainly didn't put the Triceratops at a disadvantage. An adult Triceratops could stretch up to 30 feet long, stand 10 feet tall, and weigh a whopping 11 tons, which made it a bit larger than a full-grown male African elephant. And even though it was a plant eater, it wasn't one to mess with. Its massive body made it a beast you'd want to steer clear of. A single charge or a powerful swing of its horns could easily take down anything in its way. But hey, Triceratops wasn't just brawn, it had brains too. Its skull was one of the largest compared to its body size among land animals, which says a lot about how intelligent it really was. The biggest skull found was around 8.2 feet long, almost a third of the whole dinosaur. Now let me tell you the story of how Triceratops first popped up on the radar. Back in 1887, a fossil collector named George Lyman Cannon stumbled upon a pair of horns attached to a skull plate near Denver, Colorado. Excited about his find, he sent the horns to Professor Charles Marsh, a big shot in vertebrae paleontology at Yale University. Initially, Marsh thought it was just a prehistoric bison, but a year later, John Bell Hatcher found a more complete skull in Wyoming. That got Marsh rethinking things. And voila, Triceratops was officially recognized. Later, the Canadian Triceratops scene got spiced up in 1921, when Charles Mortham Sternberg discovered the first specimen, and later, in 1946, another find in Alberta was added to the mix. Fast forward to 2014, a group of researchers took a deep dive into over 50 Triceratops skulls from Montana's Hell Creek Formation. They looked at where the fossils were in the rocks and correlated it with changes in skull structure. And it turned out that Triceratops might have evolved from one species into another over one to two million years. Triceratops had a robust skeleton with strong limbs, short hands with three hooves each, and short feet with four hooves each. The backbone included 10 neck, 12 back, 10 sacral, and approximately 45 tail vertebrae. The neck bones at the front were fused into a single cervical structure. Now, as far as their posture goes, despite early beliefs, Triceratops and its horned dinosaur pals didn't have legs sticking out to the side. Instead, they kept an upright stance during regular movement, similar to modern rhinos. Their weight was supported by the first three digits, with the other two being more like hang-around digits without claws or hooves. These sturdy legs allowed for decent movement, but Triceratops wasn't breaking any land speed records. It could trot or gallop, maybe hitting speeds up to 15 miles per hour in quick bursts. Triceratops also had some pretty cool skin, covered in big scales, some even reaching over 3.9 inches across, with pointy projections in the center. There's also a preserved piece of skin from its frill, made up of small polygonal basement scales. Now, let's talk about its neck. It was a bit odd, I gotta say. Behind that imposing frill, there's a unique ball and socket joint at the base of the skull. This joint allowed the skull to rotate in any direction, giving Triceratops a 360-degree headspin. That flexibility was handy for finding food and could also be used for defense. That head, though, was quite hefty, about 30% of the length of the whole dinosaur. Comparing it to us humans, who have a more limited range of neck movement, Triceratops had a more flexible setup. Our ball and socket joints are in our hips and shoulders, not our necks. However, when it came to senses, Triceratops wasn't winning any awards for smelling. Its sense of smell was poor compared to other dinosaurs. But it had ears tuned to low-frequency sounds. The dinosaur liked to keep its head at a 45-degree angle to the ground, 
showcasing those awesome horns in frill while efficiently grabbing some grub through grazing. Speaking of grub, Triceratops was a herbivore with a low-hanging head, suggesting it mainly feasted on low-growing vegetation. Its jaws had a deep, narrow beak that was better for grabbing and plucking than biting. Now the teeth situation was interesting. Arranged in batteries, Triceratops had 36 to 40 tooth columns on each side of its jaw, with 3 to 5 stacked teeth per column. Tooth replacement was a constant thing throughout its life, with a range of 432 to 800 teeth in total. With its massive size and numerous teeth, Triceratops likely chowed down on large volumes of fibrous plant matter. Some researchers think it went for palms and cycads, while others lean towards a diet heavy on ferns in prairie-like environments. Now, let's talk about those iconic horns and frills. Initially thought to be weapons against big predators like Tyrannosaurus, evidence suggests they might have used them in some serious head-on encounters. Marks on Triceratops' brow horn and frill show battles with T-Rex, and a lot of paleontologists think Triceratops had the upper hand in these scuffles. But there are a lot of theories on what the real function of those fancy frills might have been. First off, the frill was most probably there for show-off. It wasn't super thick or strong, so it probably wasn't for protection. Instead, it was a display piece, a way for Triceratops to warn predators attract mates, and show off its strength to fellow herd members. But the frill couldn't have been there only for the looks. It also provided a prime spot for jaw muscles to attach, being highly vascular. While it might have served a defensive purpose, most scientists lean towards it being more of a flashy display or competition tool. The idea that the frill helped regulate jaw muscle attachment hasn't gained much traction. But wait, there's a love story in the mix too. Some researchers believe the frill evolved as a result of sexual selection. Essentially, triceratops with impressive frills were more likely to catch the eye of potential mates. Now, onto the practical side. It could have also been a temperature regulator. The frill and horn cores could have played a crucial role in stabilizing brain temperatures, especially in extreme weather conditions. And now, the blockbuster theory. Defense against predators. While it's the coolest idea, think Triceratops vs. T-Rex showdowns, it might not have been as common as you'd think. Triceratops' ancestors were more like house cats in size, and the epic battles you see in movies were probably rarer than we all wish. Moving on, Triceratops had a family life too, and while details about their love life are scarce, it's believed they laid eggs in nests on the ground. The young ones likely got some parental care for the first few years, showing rapid growth in different phases, babies, juveniles, sub-adults, and finally, adults. Fossil evidence reveals significant changes in their physical features during each stage, such as horn development and frill modifications. Speaking of families, clearly Triceratops wasn't a lone ranger. It belonged to a horned and frilled dino family called Ceratopsids. These guys ruled the late Cretaceous lands, showcasing fancy frills, beak-like mouths and impressive horns. Some, like Styracosaurus, had spikes on their frills, while some, like Protoceratops, kept it more low-key. But all of them, Triceratops included, were herbivorous herd animals roaming the Lake Cretaceous. Tragically, the reign of Triceratops came to an end around 66 million years ago. A colossal asteroid, approximately 7.5 miles wide, collided with Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula causing an environmental disaster. This environmental disaster wiped out over three quarters of Earth's species, including the mighty Triceratops and other non-avian dinosaurs. The impact marked the conclusion of the dinosaur era, changing the course of life on our planet forever. In the end, it's safe to say the Triceratops left an unforgettable mark on the late Cretaceous landscape of Western North America. From its robust body to its crazy mouth filled with teeth, it isn't a dino you'll be forgetting about anytime soon. And while its reign came to an abrupt end with the cataclysmic asteroid impact, Triceratops remains a symbol of the fascinating diversity of prehistoric life. That's all for this video. Who do you think would win in a fight between this guy and the mighty T-Rex? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoy learning about ancient creatures, make sure to hit that subscribe button 
and stay tuned for more cool stuff about the past.